Hey guys, in this video I wanted to do an introduction to graph theory and this video is going to be almost exclusively an introduction to graph theory terminology and the basic idea of what a graph is. So to get started, graph theory in a really general sense is the study of objects and their relationships to each other. Usually when you talk about graph theory you'll see a graph depicted and the objects are known as vertices and so they're depicted as dots or circles and the relationships between the vertices are depicted as lines, which are called edges. So borrowing from set theory, you can consider a graph G to be equal to the ordered pair V or V of G comma E or E of G, where V is a non-empty set of vertices and E is either an empty set or a non-empty set of edges. And E, by definition, has to be a two-element subset of V. So you can write it like that. So, for example, if these vertices are labeled 1, 2, 3, 4, then V, or V of G, is going to be equal to the set 1, 2, 3, 4 for the graph. And E is going to be the ordered pair 1, 2, 2, 3. So we sometimes label the Vs as V1, V2, V3 and we can label the edges as E1 and E2 for example. So E1 can be written as the ordered pair 1 comma 2 or sometimes this is just abbreviated as 1 2. By definition an edge has to connect two vertices so there can be such a thing as a graph of just vertices or just dots but there is no such thing as a graph with just edges and no vertices. A special case of an edge is a edge that connects a vertex to itself. So if you have a graph like this, and let's say this is V1, V2, V3, V4, it is okay to have an edge connect V1 to V1. And this is a special case of an edge called a loop. It's also okay for two vertices to have more than one edge connecting them. So from V1 to V4 we can have edge 1, but we can also have another edge called edge 2. In cases where you have more than one edge for any pair of vertices, this is called having multiple edges. Because you can have multiple edges between any two vertices, usually, although it's okay to call it either way, we call call V a set of vertices and we usually call E a family of edges because any two vertices can have more than one edge connecting them. And there are two main categories of graphs. There's something called a simple graph and then the opposite or something that's not a simple graph is a multigraph. So a simple graph is by definition a graph that has no loops and or multiple edges. And a multigraph is by definition a graph that has multiple edges or has loops. Some graphs have label information while others don't, and also some graphs have directional information while others don't. So for this example of a graph, this does not have directional information. We don't know if E1 is heading toward V1 or away from V1 and towards V2. Some graphs have this information and they're called directional graphs. So if we have directional arrows pointing toward or away from the vertices, then these are called directional graphs. The opposite of that is called an undirected graph. These can also be called digraphs. Now getting into the properties of graphs, there's something called the degree or valence of a vertex. And if you have V as a vertex, then you can write it DEGV. And this is the number of edges that connect or touch the vertex. We can also say the number of edges incident to the vertex. So for this graph, the degree of V1 is equal to 1, 2, the degree of V4 is equal to 1, and the degree of V3 is equal to 1, 2, 3. When you're talking about loops, so for example if we put the loop on V4, then loops are counted as two degrees. So the new degree for V4 would be 1, 2, 3. We can also talk about the order of a graph. 
which is the number of vertices of a graph. And if you have a graph G, it's sometimes written like this, or you can see it as written like this, where V stands for vertices and G stands for the graph. So this is pretty self-explanatory. If you have a graph like this, then this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So the order of this would be equal to 9. You can also talk about the size of a graph, and this is by definition the number of edges of a graph. For a graph G, this is sometimes written like that, or you can see it as that where E stands for edges. Next, I want to talk about adjacency and incidence. So two edges are called incident if they share a vertex. So for this graph, E1 and E4 are incident because they have V3 in common. E4 and E3 are incident because they have V4 in common. However, E1 and E3 do not have any vertices in common, so E3 and E1 are not incident. Then two vertices are called adjacent if they are connected by an edge. So for this graph, V1 and V2 are adjacent because they have edge 2 in common. Same thing for V1 and V3, but V4 and V1 are not adjacent because they do not share an edge directly. If I drew an edge E5 here, then they would be adjacent. If you were looking at this as a set, you would have the set V1, 2, 3, 4, and you would have these four ordered pairs of edges, so you would know that 1, 4 was not in the set of E, and therefore it's not adjacent. Now to finish up the video, if you have a connected graph, that's a graph where every vertex is accessible by an edge. So for example, if we connect all these dots, like this, this is a connected graph, this is still a connected graph, this is a connected graph, but if we erase one line from the rest of the dots, then this becomes an unconnected graph, because this vertex is no longer reachable by an edge. And we call a complete graph a graph where every pair of vertices has a unique edge. And we usually denote this Kn, where n is the number of vertices. So if we have K1, then that's one vertex. By definition, it cannot have any edges because an edge has to connect two vertices. K2 is two vertices, and that has to have a unique edge connecting it because we have two. K3, you might be familiar with it. It's a triangle. And K4 would look something like this. So K1 is considered a trivial graph, and it's also an empty graph because it has no edges. So by definition, an empty graph is an edgeless graph, and we usually say an empty graph on n vertices, where n is the number of vertices. So this, for example, is an empty graph on two vertices. K1 also has a special name. It's called a singleton graph. The idea of a complete graph might also beg the question, what about a graph with zero vertices? So there's some discussion about this in math where sometimes people include K0 as a graph and other times some people exclude it, where obviously if we consider this the plane of existence, it would just be an empty graph with nothing in it or on it. Um, sometimes or most of the times people exclude this and say it's not a graph because there are are theorems that you would basically have to make an exception to K0 if you considered a graph, but sometimes people do consider it a graph. For example, if you're doing induction in graph theory, it's usually K0 is considered a graph. But usually the definition, like I said, considers that V has to be a non-empty set. And if you are considering K0 a graph, that's usually called the null graph. So that's all I'm going to talk about in this video. Hopefully I will make a series out of this and build on all the terminology in this video. And thank you guys for watching.